Hey, it's Aton. Welcome back to our channel. It is condiment day here. I am showing you how to make seven of the most popular condiments that you probably buy from the store at home from scratch. They're super easy to make. And I'm then at the end going to compare. Is the store-bought version better than the homemade version? Or is the homemade version better than the store-bought version? Because I do think some things may be better from the store, but we shall see. Let's get cooking. I'm starting off with homemade mustard. Yes, that's right. Mustard is made of a little mustard seeds. I don't know if you ever knew that, but this is what mustard comes from, are these little seeds. Look at this. Little, little seeds. Those are the seeds that give it delicious flavor. Now, I actually had these seeds in my kitchen because they're used a lot in Indian cuisine, and they're of course going to be used to make our mustard. So let's pour our mustard seeds into the blender, just like that. Get that all in there, and we are going to blend them up to turn them into a powder. Whoa! straight into the pot. You may recognize this, this is mustard powder. Pour in water, straight into there, followed by our spices. We're gonna add in some sugar, salt, turmeric, some paprika, some onion powder, and some garlic powder, straight into there. Nice, medium high heat, whisk that up. Bring this to a simmer, and we're gonna cook for 20 minutes. Pour into our jar. Oh, look at that. I am like really proud of this. Mustard is complete. Next up, it is pepper time. We are making Copycat Frank's hot sauce. Now you're supposed to use cayenne peppers, but all I could find were these like finger red hot peppers. So they'll do the trick. It just might be a little spicier. Let's grab these and we're going to pour them straight into the blender. This is kind of like a dump and blend situation. Vinegar right in there. Wow, that is fragrant. You could smell it in the nose. Salt and some grated garlic. Blend until smooth. Oh, that is no joke. Wow, you could like feel the spice in the air, seriously. Pot on a nice medium high flame. Pour that straight into the pot. Ooh, look at that beautiful color. That looks beautiful. Bring this to a simmer and just a warning, the vinegar and the pepper is boiling. Not gonna be fun for the eyes. So I'm just gonna, you know, keep my distance a little bit. Here I have a little jar. This kind of gives off like alcohol vibes, but it's gonna have hot sauce in it. So that's what we're doing. Place our funnel right in there and now very carefully pour it in. Oh, look at that. Look at it, it's hot sauce. Oh, oh snap. Look at how close that is. If there was literally another tablespoon, teaspoon, we'd be screwed. I am ready to dip french fries in this ASAP. I mean, smells delicious, looks delicious. Major success. Next up, honey mustard sauce. This is delicious on pretzels. It's also delicious dipped with chicken. Well, you dip the chicken into the honey mustard. I don't think you dip the honey mustard into the chicken unless if you do that, you do you. We have mayo in there, followed by some regular old mustard. A little Dijon. Personally, Dijon is my favorite mustard. I'm just gonna put that out there. Then a little bit of lemon juice and honey for sweetness. I really love honey mustard because it's it's just so versatile, you know? You can dip so many things in it. It gives it a little sweetness. It's kind of like a little sweet, a little tangy. It's just delicious. This is, is this a large whisk for what I'm about to do? Yes, it is. And I'm the boss here, so I'm doing it. Whisk that up. And your work here is done. Pour into our jar. Ooh, look at that beautiful color. Wow, this is exciting. Honey mustard is done. Time for ranch. I'm excited about this one. This one is another dump and stir. You just dump and stir. Mayonnaise, followed by sour cream. You wanna do both of them. Then, very important, buttermilk. Buttermilk is the key. Oh, look how thick that is. That's gonna add that necessary tang, all those notes of flavor. Fresh herbs are key. Parsley. I love doing, whenever I have two bowls with stuff in it, I love doing the little bowl symbols. Right in there, parsley and dill. Apple cider vinegar for some acidity. Little bit of garlic. Plop. And the ingredient no one knows how to pronounce, Worcestershire. Also known as Worcestershire. 
into there. Salt and pep, of course, very important. Freshly cracked pepper. If you're not cracking your pepper fresh, what, what are you doing? And a little salt bay action straight into there. I have a whisk here and I'm just not using it. It's too bad. Stir it up. That is a really unpleasant sound. And just like that, you have homemade ranch. Pour into your serving jar. And one thing that is very important for ranch is you want to refrigerate it. This will A, keep it food safe because you have the buttermilk and the sour cream there. And also it'll help it thicken a little bit. So it is that consistency that we all know and love. If you're enjoying this video, might I suggest you pre-order my debut cookbook, Aton Eats the World. Aton Eats the World is available for pre-order everywhere books are sold. We're talking Barnes Noble, Amazon, Books a Million. Wherever you get your books, you can pre-order A Tiny World. It's the number one way you can support my work. So if you enjoy my videos, highly recommend giving to pre-order. And plus, it is full of 85 delicious cover food recipes that I cannot wait to share from my kitchen to yours. Watch out, sweet baby race barbie sauce, because I am coming for your brand with this next one. We have all our ingredients right here in front of us. This is another great example of a dump and stir and cook. We are taking our ketchup straight in there. Now, I am also making homemade ketchup, so we're not gonna tell anyone that I use store-bought ketchup to make homemade barbecue sauce. If you don't tell anyone, I won't tell anyone. Brown sugar. Some molasses. This is very important. I mean, look at that. Ooh. I kind of think of molasses as like honey's like stepbrother or like brother, you know? Like they're kind of related, but molasses is like more sophisticated. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. So that's my thoughts. Apple cider vinegar, very important. Wata. Into there. For thickener, very important, add in a little bit of cornstarch. The cornstarch is gonna help us, you know, have a nice thick, well, do you wanna leave? Simply doesn't wanna leave the bowl. Whole lot of Worcestershire. It's gonna give you a lot of savory flavor. Now, one of the signature parts of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce is the pineapple juice in it. Spices, super important. Mustard powder, smoked pap, don't go and buy the regular. Garlic powder, salt, onion powder, freshly ground pepper, and a little cayenne for some heat. Oh my God, I like, don't, don't want to ruin this beautiful, this beautiful arrangement. Oh, so, so sorry, 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 sorry. Put that on a medium high heat, stir it up, and simmer for about 20 minutes. This is going to thicken. It's just gonna fill your kitchen with the most incredible smell. It already looks like barbecue sauce. Do I get points for that? I'm ready to. Slather this on a chicken or some sort of protein. <laughs> barbecue sauce is nice and thick. A very important note with the barbecue sauce is you want it to be really, really thick as you can see. And the key to doing that is making sure it really boils. The cornstarch needs to boil in order to thicken. And that is really the key. Barbecue sauce is ready. Ketchup is a classic for a reason. My dad puts ketchup on literally everything. I will cook sometimes a whole meal at home, spend time perfecting the flavors of the dish, the right spices, and my dad will squirt ketchup on it. You do you. If he loves ketchup, he can love ketchup. I do love ketchup, but I also love other things. But to my dad, ketchup is king. Now, the kind of core elements when you're making ketchup is you want a really intense tomatoey flavor to start with. I have before made ketchup from like tomatoes, and I do not recommend doing that. It takes way more time, it's a bit of a hassle. Tomato paste is your friend, and it is just going to save so much time. Now, the other two key elements of ketchup is a perfect balance of sweet and acidity. Usually I would do this with honey, but Heinz uses sugar, so we're using sugar. So sugar into there, followed by our vinegar, which is gonna give us nice acidity. Some water, garlic powder, salt, and onion powder. Put that on a nice high heat. Stir that up until fully combined. And we're gonna simmer this for about 20 minutes or so until it's thickened and reduced. Look at that beautiful red color. All other ketchups are quaking right now. Ketchup complete. The world of mayo is an interesting one. Take our little egg, little egg yolks. Plop, plop, some lemon juice and Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard is super important for helping us with the emulsification process. Now it is time for a workout. I, I don't make mayo often because it is a workout. So that's what I'm doing. 
Start by whisking these all together and we are just trying to create a beautiful emulsification. Emulsifications are one of the most beautiful parts of the culinary world. Now, a lot of people when whisking will whisk in circles. That's actually not the best or most efficient way to whisk. You wanna kinda of go for a figure eight formation. This will just increase the amount of air you're getting in there and then usually like obviously I'll do a little kind of round whisk for a second just to get it off the sides but a good figure eight formation is the way to go when whisking. So work out, I'm telling you. Once, as you can see, it is starting to lighten in color just a tad. Now we are taking the oil. This is just some regular old vegetable oil and very slowly drip it in while whisking. See what I'm saying? Literally a few drops in at a time. We're trying to create an emulsification. And if you add it in too quickly, it will ruin the emulsification or the term is like it'll break the emulsification, which is not what we want. We want mayo. Oh my God, it's quite the workout. I've only did about a third of the work and I'm exhausted. Some salt bay action, freshly cracked pepper, whisk until fully combined. All right, right before our eyes, we went from egg yolks, Dijon mustard, a little bit of lemon juice and a whole lot of oil to this thick, globious mayonnaise. Transfer. That is some good looking mayonnaise. If I've ever seen one, well, I've seen more than one. I've seen a whole lot. I've seen a lot of mayonnaise in my days. Everything is ready. It is eating time. My favorite time of all. I whipped up some quick French fries in the oven. I, I, are these store-bought French fries to dip into homemade condiments? Yes, yes, they are. I'm shameless. Too bad. Where am I? I'm gonna start with ketchup. You know, a classic condiment. I feel like when, I, when, when you say the word condiment, people think of ketchup. Let's start with that. A nice ketchup fry. Mmm. That is, mm. It's so indistinguishable from regular store-bought ketchup. That is delicious. Honey mustard, also thrilled about this one. That's delicious. Barbecue sauce. Not gonna lie, I'm not a barbecue boy. I am more of a, a mustard man. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna say it, but uh, nonetheless, I will Ooh, that is nice and thick. Cheers. Oh, I might be a barbecue boy. It's delicious. I think the key flavor in this that really gives it that well-rounded flavor is the smoked paprika. You cannot skimp on the paprika. If you use regular paprika, we just can't be, like, we can't be friends. Like, if you have, if you have the ability to get some smoked paprika, do it. It just really rounds out the flavor. Next up, mustard. Ooh, that is pungent. Slide that on a hot dog and call it a day. Ranch. I told you it would thicken. See how we have that thick ranch right there? That refrigeration time is really important. Bright, refreshing, delicious. Other positive adjectives. Ranch is ranch. Mayonnaise. Add some garlic in there and you have yourselves aioli. And last but not least, I very purposely did not do this one first because I don't want to burn my literal face off. We have our hot sauce. We go, look at that beautiful color. Now, I think this is going to be quite spicier than Frank's. So I'm gonna. Doot. Oh, yeah. That's spicy. Spicy, but flavorful. That, my friends, is how you make your own condiments from scratch. If I'm gonna be honest, I think my starts the show, and if you're at home and you're like, well, Aton, I'm not gonna make all seven of these. Like, ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. I'm not doing that. Then I would definitely say barbecue sauce and ketchup are the ones that I would recommend trying. Uh, mayonnaise is always a good classic. Not gonna lie, it's like, like it's good. I want to only make those two, but you should make all of them. Get yourself three hours. Whip these up and you will thank me later. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, be sure to let me know by hitting the like button. Comment down below, what is your favorite condiment? Are there any things I didn't make that you wanna see me make in the future? And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button to join the YouTube family to see all my videos. Hit the bell notification so that YouTube actually tells you when I post videos and follow me on all the socials at Aton. If you need me, I'm just gonna be enjoying the rest of these. Wow. Mm. Like, just look how viscous that is. You could hold it over your head. That is how viscous it is. Mm. Wow. I'm impressed with myself. Mm.